Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's my honor to have the opportunity to give a talk here. So thanks to the organizer. Uh, this is the first time for me to take part in the uh, WOMP. Uh, I'm uh, from Hangzhou, Zhejiang University of Technology. Maybe not all of you know where is Hangzhou. So just uh, I, I uh, show you where it uh, uh, comes from. Maybe everyone knows Shanghai, the biggest the city in China. And Hangzhou is uh, very close to, to uh, Shanghai. It's, of course, in Chinese scale. It's uh, 200 kilometers away from Shanghai. So uh, Hangzhou is a very beautiful city. And we have a, a very famous uh, West Lake. It's a world cultural heritage. So uh, if you want to have uh, uh, this seminar in China, please come to Hangzhou. <laughs> Maybe it's uh, one of the candidates the year after next year. Uh, this is the outline of uh, uh, my talk. Uh, at first, I just uh, mentioned briefly the importance of uh, magnetic field measurement. As you know, we uh, are living on Earth, and uh, we have, uh, uh, the Earth has a magnetic field. And this is uh, uh, very important for us. Uh, although we are not very clear why the Earth has a magnetic field, because not all planets have a magnetic field. And this is very important for us. And it is still changing, and of course, in a big time scale. If there is no magnetic field, then we cannot exist on the Earth. And now, not only the Earth has a magnetic field, but we, our body, ourselves, also will produce Magnet, uh, magnetic field. Of course, it's uh, much smaller than the magnetic field of the Earth. So uh, because we, we are very used to the magnetic field, so uh, the uh, people uh, know uh, very early time and have many instruments to measure it. The oldest one is called uh, compass. Uh, in ancient China, we have uh, such uh, devices. Of course, it is mechanical. <coughs> And then we have uh, electronic devices, much uh, sensitive. And now we are talking about uh, uh, quantum sensor, especially atomic magnetometer. Uh, as uh, you are all aware, so I just mentioned very briefly the atomic uh, magnetometer. This is thanks to the development of atomic physics and the laser technology. And also now we have uh, uh, quantum control technology of atoms. Uh, this is the common configuration to have the uh, atom, atomic magnetometer. At first, uh, we should have a pump laser, and then we have the precession process, and also we will have a proper laser. Uh, this is just uh, uh, show clear, uh, uh, simply the uh, pump process. We pump the uh, atom to a certain state, and then we uh, uh, apply uh, a pulse to uh, uh, have the processing process. So uh, and then if we uh, can measure the processing process by, by the frequency, then we will can uh, calculate the magnetic field. And the uh, proper method, we also have uh, uh, different methods. One is uh, uh, absorption that we can uh, measure the uh, 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 magnetic field uh, by absorption. Another method is we use the Faraday rotation method. And both uh, methods are, are possible. And in our uh, experiment, we use the so-called free induction decay magnetometer. For we, our aim is to uh, measure the magnetic field uh, of our heart. I just mentioned uh, uh, briefly uh, why we, our uh, heart has uh, have magnetic field, because we, our heart is a pump uh, of blood, and uh, there are many ions in the blood. So then uh, this process, will, of course, will produce a magnetic field. And this is uh, uh, the uh, magnetic field of our heart have uh, a very rich of information, which is very important to our health. Uh, we have, uh, everyone knows that 
uh, we will do uh, ECG in hospital, uh, but this is not enough uh, because uh, some uh, disease cannot uh, find by uh, ECG because the conductivity of our body is not uniform, uh, but the uh, permeativity of uh, our body uh, is uniform. So uh, some information will uh, cannot find just only by ECG. So it will be very helpful if we can also make uh, MCG uh, instead, uh, instead of ECG is a uh, useful complement. Uh, especially in China, now a, a, a very large amount of people, uh, someone said there are uh, 290 million people is suffered uh, from uh, cardiovascular diseases. So uh, this is the first killer uh, of people. So uh, now uh, let me show you just the pre uh, briefly the, uh, how the free induction decay magnetometer works. So this is the uh, principle. We have a pump laser, and uh, then uh, we will have uh, uh, some uh, 5D rotation for, to measure the LIMO uh, frequency. Uh, this is the uh, diameter we have measured in our experiment. The magnetic field uh, looks like this. Uh, so uh, there are several methods to calculate the signal. One is uh, ex exponential function uh, fitting uh, algorithm, and uh, the second one will be uh, FFT method, and the third one is a singular value uh, deposition. Uh, th uh, this is uh, uh, under uh, investigation, and uh, all these methods are possible. But uh, now we use uh, FFT method because it's it's. Uh, uh, very quick method, we can uh, give the uh, magnetic field uh, very quickly. So this is the uh, result, uh, our experiment. Uh, we have this signal, then we will choose uh, a period of time of the FID signal, and then we use FF FFT fitting, then we can uh, get very quickly of the mag magnetic field. Uh, in order to increase the signal, we also uh, uh, tested a multipulse uh, method, which was first uh, uh, used by uh, uh, Professor uh, uh, Lomalis, uh, and uh, one of uh, my students worked uh, there, and also now we also tested this method. Uh, in our experiment, we can improve uh, the sensitivity by one order of magnitude. And this is the result uh, we uh, have obtained. Uh, by this method uh, of the uh, magnetic field. This is uh, uh, a singular channel FID magnetometer, and here is the uh, student volunteer. Uh, in order to get uh, uh, many more sig uh, signals, we uh, also made a multi channel sensor. This is uh, uh, consisted of eight channels. So this is the design, this, this is the setup we, we made, uh, that's an eight-channel sensor. And uh, uh, also we use it to test the, the, uh, our, our volunteer. Our, our, uh, this is the result. We use this eight-channel sensor to move uh, several times. Then we can uh, get uh, uh, 64 uh, channel signals. And this is the result. If we use uh, this uh, uh, information, we can get the uh, how the magnetic field just outside our body how it changes uh, in within uh, uh, one cycle of uh, of our uh, beating of our heart. And this information uh, should be uh, very helpful to find uh, if there are anything disorder or something uh, of the heart. And uh, the next work we uh, also performed is uh, we used the uh, surf magnetic meter to detect uh, the uh, uh, magnetic field of the brain. So uh, in order to uh, improve the sensitivity, the surf is a very uh, good uh, method uh, in the very low uh, environment and uh, use a higher uh, temperature where we can improve the sensitivity. Uh, this is the first setup in our, uh, our lab to uh, have made the uh, surf uh, detector. 
uh, it uh, looks not so beautiful, but uh, uh, it uh, really works. Uh, this is the uh, testing of the, this uh, uh, surf. Uh, th uh, we have used uh, the calibration of a mag magnetic field. Uh, we found the sensitivity is around 6 to 10 femtosecond per square uh, hertz, square root hertz. And uh, the bandwidth is uh, uh, about 12 hertz. Uh, we also tested by a uh, uh, use uh, an, an ordinary stimul stimulator. So uh, if we uh, stimulate it by the sound, then we can have clear signals. Uh, another test is we uh, uh, have improved this uh, setup to uh, make it more compact. Then we can uh, also test this is the result. If we uh, use our eye open and close, difference can be found. Uh, so, in order to get more information, we also tested uh, the multi-channel uh, uh, surf uh, detector. So, we, uh, the way we use is we uh, use a relatively uh, large uh, web cell, uh, but the detector is uh, divided into four. So, uh, the, in this case, in method, we can de uh, detect the four signals uh, of the uh, brain. Uh, okay, uh, this is the sensitivity uh, of the uh, four channel. It's uh, about uh, uh, 100 uh, uh, FT calibration, and the sensitivity is almost uh, the same as the uh, single single channel. So uh, this is uh, also uh, the audio uh, uh, stimulate uh, stimulate the the result of the four. Uh, signals, uh, four channels is almost uh, the same. So this is a uh, 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 four channel. We can the, uh, we can get the also the uh, gradient of the magnetic field. So in order to get get real uh, uh, four channel, we uh, have used the longitudinal parametric modulation method to uh, measure the real four channel signals. Uh, by uses, uh, using this method, we, we, it, it's possible to use, uh, de detect uh, not only the gradient, but also the uh, four independent signals. Okay, so that's uh, not only uh, uh, in the x direction, but also allow us to detect the uh, y direct, uh, direction. Okay, uh, this is the uh, uh, auditory stimuli of uh, the response uh, of the uh, four channels. So next uh, step, we are going to uh, uh, decide to make the more uh, channels, and then um, probably it will be helpful to the poor, uh, uh, more signals of uh, our brain. Uh, this is uh, uh, our group. The uh, this is uh, uh, Ms. Uh, Dr. Zhang, who is also here, who uh, made all the uh, experiments. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>